The Game Awards 2024 is just around the corner, and needless to say, the games that have been nominated for Game of the Year, it's been a little bit controversial. While a lot of people are talking about certain games not making the list, like Like a Dragon, Infinite Wealth, as well as Stellar Blade, certain games do make the list now, which include Elden Ring's DLC, which previously wasn't allowed until they decided that this year was going to be an exception. But now that those decisions have been made for what games are nominated for Game of the Year, including Metaphor Refantasio, Astro Bot, Black Myth Wukong, Final Fantasy Fantasy 7 Rebirth, Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree, and Balotro, I figured it'd be a good time to try and bring in some of my statistics knowledge to make a bold prediction as to, well, which of one of these games is going to win Game of the Year. And so my name is Marks and strap in because you're going to get a little bit of a statistics lesson, but it's all in trying to predict what the Game of the Year is going to be this year based off of all the previous years. So I think this is going to be a little bit of fun. Okay, so what I have done is I've gone through all of the previous years of the Game Awards, leading back to the very first Game Awards that has ever happened, and taken all of the nominees, including the game winner, and inputted them into our data set, which we are going to be using that to base our predictions as to what is going to be Game of the Year. And so what I mean by statistics is I'm going to be building a logistic regression model to try and figure out which characteristics of these games and which properties of these games will make it more likely to win Game of the Year versus those that just stay in the nominations and they end up being losses. For the stat heads out there, this is following linear regression models, where essentially linear regression is the Y equals MX plus B, where you're predicting the Y based off of the X value, and then you are able to calculate what the B and the M is, plus you can add in a whole bunch of different variables. That's just at, at very surface level. But because this is a binomial event, namely they're either game of the year or they are not game of the year versus something that happened in my health sciences here like BMI based off of a number of characteristics. Uh, that's why we need to do the logistic regression model where essentially you're doing a log odds of something which will allow you to calculate the probability of an event occurring and then do your calculations to see whether or not it's going to be significant. So the big question that I needed to bring in for all of these nominees for Game of the Year, and of course the ones that actually won it, was to define some characteristics about these certain games, which could mirror trends as to, you know, if this is a certain type of game, it's more likely to win Game of the Year. Intuitively, the one that made the most sense was to take a look at the Metacritic score, and obviously you would think that a higher Metacritic score means it's more likely to win Game of the Year. There were a couple factors that I thought were more interesting to investigate. First up were single player games versus multiplayer games, so the number of players that can play the game. Next, I took a look at a genre, so do RPG games versus tactic games versus JRPG games versus action shooters. You know, what is the genre, maybe the, one of these genres is a better predictor for winning game of the year. Then I looked at the setting, so you know, do fantasy games mostly win it out, or medieval, more modern games, or futuristic cyberpunky type of games? And last but not least, I feel like a lot of the game awards lately have been based on open world games. So is open world versus a more linear story game, is there a little bit of influence on that that could predict the game awards? And of course, that's my own intuition kind of coming in and making the decision on some of these factors. But one of the other things that I took a look at were papers that did very similar modeling in order to predict which movie was going to win the Oscars. And something I noticed across a lot of these different papers was hey, if they win a lot of awards outside of the Oscars, they're more likely to win the Oscars. And so I brought in the Golden Joystick Awards, which thankfully had just wrapped up. So we already have our winners for the 2024 Golden Joysticks. And how I did this is calculate the number of Golden Joysticks won on the year in order to predict whether or not it was going to win Game of the Year at the Game Awards. For example, a game could have won multiple different categories for like best RPG, best soundtrack, all of these different things, which means that the whole game as a package is probably going to be better. And so I think it makes sense that if they win a variety of golden joystick awards, you're more likely to see a game of the year contender. Last but not least, I was genuinely very curious about recency bias. So do games that come out in the first quarter of the year versus the last quarter of the year, is there some sort of trend there? Because, you know, everyone remembers the games that had most recently come out, so it might be a little bit more interesting and people might rate it a little bit higher than those games that came out all the way back in like January and February and even December of last year, because that kind of makes the cutoff for the most recent game awards. 
I just want to remind everybody that this is purely for fun. There's a lot of assumptions that I'm going to be making with this specific statistical method, and keeping in mind that there have been only 10 years of game awards, that means that there's been only 10 successes, whereas there's been 40 losses. So this is not a very large, robust data set, and so a lot of the core assumptions may be getting a little bit stretched thin here. But you know, this is just video games. This is just for fun. So let's go into it now and let's see which one of these variables are actually going to be relevant to predicting the game of the year. But essentially how I approached this was every single variable that I mentioned in the previous part of this video, I am going to be throwing this into a basic logistic regression model. And what's great about R is you can run a summary report finding on to see whether or not the variable is actually important. Essentially, it's possible that it's just a by chance that some of these things may seem like they have an impact, but through statistics, we can figure out whether or not it truly is chance or that there actually is an impact from said variable. And so when I ran through Metacritic score, players, genre, setting, world design, golden joystick winners, and release, interestingly enough, the only two variables that were deemed important were Metacritic score, as well as the number of golden joystick awards that have been won. And so with that information, I built a little bit more complex model, which is only going to be based off of Metacritic score, as well as the number of golden joystick awards that have been won. And then you just do some fancy stuff just to make sure that, you know, collinearity, the model is good the way that it is. And I did all the basic testing just to make sure that this is somewhat more accurate and it passed every single test. And so what I'm going to be presenting here, my model only relies on Metacritic score as well as the golden joystick awards that have been won that year to predict what the game of the year is going to be. Next step is to take all of the current Game Award nominees and let's take a look at what their Metacritic score is as well as the number of joystick awards that they have won this year. As you can see, it's pretty interesting to take a look at this because, you know, you've got the highest rated games Astrobot, Elden Ring, and Metaphor Re Fantasio having a decently low amount of joystick wins, despite the fact that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth has the most despite being a lower Metacritic score. We plug this into our model to find the log odds of each of these games potentially winning, and then we do our calculation then to see which one is going to have the highest probability of winning game of the year. And drum roll, please. I hope this doesn't disturb my audio quality, but it is Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. So let's talk about this result because turns out that while Metacritic score was pretty important in predicting things, Golden Joystick wins actually had a much more pronounced impact at predicting what the game of the year was going to be. And so while Final Fantasy VII was lagging behind some of the other nominees in actual score, it won so many Golden Joystick awards that it really pulled it ahead of its competition, which is why that it is the one that I'm predicting, or sorry, the model is predicting, is going to win game of the year. And when you look a little bit closer at the data, the probability for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is much higher than all of the other nominees. And so, you know, by all intents and purposes, I didn't do any statistical significance testing or anything, but it is pretty evident that this is a pretty out there result relative to the other ones. But keep in mind this result is very limited to the data that we were presenting it with. For example, I only counted the number of golden joystick wins. I didn't think about nominations at all, nor did I even think about the own game of the year nominations. Like if this game was nominated for a bunch of different categories, did that have an impact? I simply just didn't calculate that. So this could be expanded to a whole host of different variables or other game award shows that I'm just simply not familiar with. I was really working with the information that I had and the information that I had gathered based off of 10 years of the game awards existing. Admittedly, this is a very basic model that I made on intuition. And of course, if this was proper science, there would be a lot more of a thorough investigation into what would be very important to predict game of the year and thus what variables I should have included. Do I think Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, though, is going to win? Honestly, it's really hard to say. Personally, I think Astrobot has a little bit of a better time getting in there. I think it's a stronger competitor just because it was a lot more approachable to the masses and was bringing in like all the new fans who, you know, oh, this is a really cool platforming game, but also all the old fans who are so dedicated to so many of these IPs that are associated with Sony. Everybody loved Astrobot, so I, I, I really do think that Astrobot's probably going to win out of these, but the model says Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, so, you know, one of those two, one of those two. <laughs> 
Now that we're kind of at the end of the video, I just want to remind everybody that this is just a fun little exercise that I did. And while it's about video games, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about these statistical models, then I'd highly recommend checking out StatQuest with Josh Starmer and use the R data science because I was just watching a lot of their videos, which really helped me understand, first of all, what logistic regression means and how to calculate these probabilities, as well as just how to code in R. It was extremely helpful for me to be able to do this. I'm not gonna lie, I, I swear I also used to watch their videos when I was doing my masters because stats is very confusing and they just explained it really well. I'd be curious to know, did what variables would you have liked to see in this model? Let me know down below because if there are any other factors that you would have liked to see get tossed in, you know, next year when I'm running this again, obviously I would love to hear a little bit more input. What other things do you think are impacting whether or not a game wins game of the year or not? Let's, let's try and build a good model that can predict some data. And you know what? While you're here, like, subscribe, comment down below, or you know what? Check out this video because I just published a video on my love letter, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. And even though I don't think it'll win GOATI this year, it's, it's still a really good game. And there is a lot to love about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is a completely different package for this JRPG franchise. And so we need to shift away from the action, everything is gonna happen in a straight row, and move more over to what I call the slice of life anime syndrome.